I believe that we have to go to a non-negotiated price, totally online, transparent, 100% pickup and delivery model. Ever since Henry Ford pioneered the dealership model, it has been the main way cars are bought in America. But after two years of dealers taking advantage of limited supply and forcing customers to pay above the MSRP, things are changing. The Ford CEO has recently introduced some new rules dealers must follow to stop high markups, but the dealers are pushing back. Join us as we explain exactly what the Ford CEO has just said and why dealers are getting crushed. Before we explain what the dealers have just done, it's important to know why we're in this situation. Although it's not a brand new practice, since 2020, dealers have been charging way above MSRP simply because there is a lower supply and higher demand. Ford recognized this and introduced several procedures like a name match policy in an attempt to block dealers from selling cars at higher prices. But these measures didn't work. So the Ford CEO took it one step further and forced all dealers to pay between $500 and $1.2 million to opt in so they can sell electric Fords. This meant that dealers would need to invest a sizable amount of money to become certified and also agree to fixed non-negotiable pricing. But it seems this isn't going to be such a smooth process after all. Because of the scarcity of vehicles, we all know dealers have been charging outrageous prices well above the MSRP. It's difficult to get a brand new vehicle for a good price if you didn't pre-order. And even then, you could get hit with a markup. Just ask anyone in the market for a new Ford Bronco or the F-150 Lightning. Earlier this year, Inside EV's blog reported that the Lightning Owners Forum alerted them about some of the highest dealer markups it has seen on the all-new Ford F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck. The sad part is that the price gouging has only just begun, since Ford just started selling the Lightning. According to them, the forum member Junk in the Frunk, who posted the information, cited a recent tweet showing an F-150 Lightning selling for $145,309. However, they made it clear that they didn't have any specific details aside from what was posted on Twitter. Junk in the Funk wrote, A Platinum starts at about $91,000, and obviously there are a ton of options you can add from there, but a plus 50% market adjustment? I'm thinking Ford Corporate might have something to say about this. Additionally, two other Lightning electric truck choices were currently offered, with the pricing starting roughly at $130,000. Remember that Ford already dealt with a similar dealer markup issue with its Mustang Mach-E electric crossover. Even though it was difficult for Ford to regulate franchised retailers, the carmaker publicly warned dealers that they risk losing their F-150 allocation allotment if they mark up these vehicles. However, that didn't stop them from making some extra money by selling their current inventory at prices way above MSRP. So, some of these dealers have sold the entry-level version of the Ford F-150 Lightning for up to $130,940. This vehicle's MSRP is $41,769, making the markup utterly ridiculous. In fact, the vehicle marked up to this level is supposed only to be available to fleet customers. After much protest, Jim Farley, president and chief executive officer of Ford, listened to the public's complaints and released some information on dealer sanctions. It was revealed that roughly 10% of the dealer network was charging above MSRP, according to Farley, who expressed his displeasure during an earnings call. According to Gary Gastelou at Fox Business, Barclays analyst Brian Johnson estimated the value of the markups at $3.6 billion. That's roughly half of the higher income per unit Ford reported for 2021, according to Gastelou. During the call, Farley said, We have very good knowledge of who they are, and their future allocation of product will be directly impacted. Also, further punishment by Ford will limit future allocations of Ford EV models and other hot sellers such as the Ford Bronco SUV. Many dealers' bottom lines can easily and quickly suffer if access to new models is restricted. Headquarters made it clear they were against customers having to pay extra deposits or payments to dealers, even though dealerships are competing for the best deals and attempting to getting as much money as they can. The Ford boss reportedly took notice of several Blue Oval sellers late last year 
for questionably extending their hands, according to the drive. The CEO wasn't happy when stories surfaced about dealerships allowing Lightning reservation holders to skip the queue in exchange for hundreds of dollars more. One Illinois dealership even attempted to tack on a $10,000 markup on a mach -E, but that business received a swift reprimand from above. A Ford spokesperson reported to The Drive via email in January and said, We've heard a limited number of dealerships are interacting with customers in a manner that is negatively impacting customer satisfaction. If Ford determines that a dealership is engaging in such practices, we reserve the right to redirect that dealership's allocation of the F-150 Lightning for the entirety of the 2022 model year. Dealerships reportedly received notice at the company's annual dealership convention in Las Vegas that they have until October 31st to determine whether or not they wish to sell electric automobiles. However, making the choice is more complicated than simply checking a box, and dealers will need to show their support by forking out a sizable amount of money to comply with several stringent requirements, such as fixed, no-haggle pricing. Ford previously said that it would separate its operations for selling gas and electric vehicles into two different divisions, Ford Blue Oval for gas sales and Ford Model E for complete electrification. Dealers can continue to operate under the Blue Oval brand even if they decide to sell combustion-powered vehicles or hybrids, including plug-in hybrids. However, a dealership must join Ford's Model E division and make a sizable commitment if it wants to sell fully electric cars. A dealer must consent to Ford's new fixed price policy before becoming Model E certified. This will entail the dealership setting online pre-negotiated prices for its new electric vehicles, enabling buyers to shop around from dealer to dealer, even making their purchase and arranging a home delivery without having to leave their house. Customers are also welcome to make their purchase in person at the dealership, but Ford will still be scrutinizing receipts and expecting the same price to be honored. Dealers that choose to apply to become Model E certified must also decide whether or not they want to spend extra money to receive the Elite label. In essence, the dealership's lower-tier Model E certified appointment merely allows it to market and sell battery electric Fords, but with an undetermined annual EV sales cap. Elite dealers, on the other hand, will reportedly not be subject to this cap. Model E certified is the first level and Ford estimates that dealers who choose it will have to spend up to $500,000. The dealership's own EV infrastructure will be built using that money. If they choose this course, dealers will be able to order EVs for customers but won't be given access to any stock or demo units. The Model E Elite, which is the second tier, on the other hand, comes with a guaranteed annual allotment, access to EV inventory, and demo units. However, they'll have to pay up to $1.2 million for the opportunity. This involves making sure the dealership has two or more DC fast charges, one of which should be designated for customers only. We don't want to rush dealers into being a Model E dealer before they're ready to, Farley told reporters at the Las Vegas dealership meeting. We want people to take on these standards that can be profitable in executing them. It will not be good for the dealers or the company if people take on these standards and they don't get a return on their investment. We're not so excited or dogmatic that we want a certain number of people to take it that we'd look past the financial viability of it. That would be a really bad move for us. Ford delayed the deadline for signing up for the Model E program from the original deadline of October 31st to December 2nd in response to dealer requests for more time. It was also suggested to Automotive News by Tim Horvick, chairman of Ford's National Dealer Council, that the program might still be changed. However, Given that Ford has already held dozens of meetings with dealerships across the country, it is unclear what kind of changes might be suggested or ultimately implemented to satisfy the dealerships dissatisfied with Ford's current program requirements. It seems that some dealers aren't exactly pleased about the thought of investing up to $1.2 million back into their business simply to be allowed to sell Ford's new EVs. According to Automotive News, dealer associations in at least 13 states have allegedly objected to the proposal, citing unfair benefits for shops that decide to fork out the money. According to reports, Ford CEO Jim Farley received a letter from Jeff Delvin, CEO of the Pennsylvania Automotive Association, stating that the program violates multiple provisions of Pennsylvania law. Additionally, Don Hall, the CEO of the Virginia Automobile Dealers Association, said that it was illegal under state franchise law to provide dealers fewer vehicles based on their equipment investments. 
Ford reportedly refuted this assertion, saying that the automaker was confident that the provisions of the Model E were not only legal, but also that the OEM had received overall positive feedback from its dealers. Ford stressed that this program is optional, and dealers do not require a commitment to continue selling combustion-powered vehicles at this time. Any dealer who wants to sell electric vehicles must adhere to five new pillars, regardless of the certification they pick. They include training, charging, e-commerce, physical experiences, and digital experiences. The e-commerce pillar in that group includes a requirement that retailers must provide transparent, non-negotiable pricing. Ford will survey customers after sales to make sure that dealers are following that requirement. Here's the only big problem with the plan. Markups are likely to continue as long as Ford is unwilling or unable to punish dealers that overcharge customers severely. Dealers still determine the ultimate pricing. Nevertheless, let's wait and see how these improvements take shape. Fiercer competition among automakers only makes for a better product in the end. Thank you very much for watching today. We'd truly appreciate it if you'd leave a like and consider subscribing so you're always in the loop for the latest EV and tech news.